The Bakuneko 65 was a keyboard kit that I had really wanted to get because of its unique mounting system. It is one of the few keyboards out there that utilizes a gummy o-ring mount where a large o-ring is squished between the plate and the PCB so that the assembly can be secured to the case with just friction. This in theory would result in a bouncier typing feel with a clacky sound profile. So now that I finally got it, I had to ask myself, was it worth it? Yes, the answer is yes. You can just skip to the end, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm just kidding, please stay. In this video, we will look at the setup of the kit and do a few rounds of sound testing. I would test the board by itself, and then with some neoprene case foam, and then with just the tape mod, and then with tape and some polyfill to see which configuration helps the board to stand out the most. We'll also do a quick dive into the setup and installation of this keyboard. This is a standard Kale hot swap south facing PCB with white LEDs. There's no RGB here guys, so this is mainly going to be for backlighting. This o-ring will be used to keep the assembly in place via friction once you've set the board into the case. This is essentially Box 65's mounting mechanism. You also get a set of stabilizers that will need to be clipped and lubed, some silicone feet, and a unified daughter board that will need to be screwed into the case. The F44 plate is nicely machined and has a decent flex. And lastly, you get this <clears throat> stately zinc weight for the case. I have nothing good to say about it other than that it's hefty. A silicone option may be available if it's in stock. To start, you'll need to screw in the daughter board to the case. The kit comes with clipping stabilizers that you'll need to lube and clip the protruding nubs off of. The reason we clip these protruding nubs is to prevent any inconsistent sound and feel that may occur when the stabilizer bottoms out. For switches, I will be using Akko's Pre-Lubed Wine White, a tactile switch that should pair nicely with the Box 65's signature sound profile. If you're new to putting together a plate and PCB assembly, this is something that you'll need to know. The top plate is secured over the PCB via the switches. So as you insert your switches into this hot swap PCB, you'll need to make sure to pull the plate up onto the switch so that it snaps, essentially holding the plate into place. Once you're done with the assembly, place the O-ring between the plate and PCB and wrap it around the entire assembly. Okay, all you have to do now is to slide the PCB against the notch of the case until it is set. Then push the PCB down from the top until it is seated. For keycaps, I am going with these clone GMK Layman black on whites. These are die sub PBT and are actually within a reasonable price range. Before we get to the sound test, don't forget to give me a high five by hitting that like button and subscribing. Or Leave a comment down below on what you think I'm missing or what you'd like to see next. Either way, thank you so much for watching.
Okay, I absolutely loved the sound of tape in polyfill. It's still clacky, but also thockier. I hated the neoprene rubber on this board. I think it muted the keyboard so much that it sounded awful. I also think the tape mod by itself is actually pretty legit. And I'm okay without any mods on this board actually. It's clacky but clean. Overall though, tape and polyfill is the winner for me. The CNC version is absolutely flawless compared to its aluminum casted counterpart. I didn't spot a single blemish or imperfection and the corner cuts are nice and smooth. The o-ring mounting style is really fun and the typing feel is light and springy. Also, taking the board apart for modding is incredibly easy. It literally takes 5 seconds to open. Now let's talk about some of the cons. It has poor flex. This is partially due to the small notches on the bottom of the case that keeps the assembly from sitting too low, but it definitely impacts the flex. In comparison, this is an EK68, a gasket mounted keyboard that has a good amount of flex. And then this is the Akko Spring 67, a spring mounted board that has a crazy amount of flex and has different spring sets with different weights for different levels of flex. Of course, flex isn't everything, but if it matters to you, don't be surprised with this one. Also, because the O-ring mounting style requires the switches at the corner in order to keep its shape, you would need to take the board out if you plan on replacing any of the switches at the corners and then rewrap the O-ring. Sometimes during installation, the switch by the left arrow key may pop up when you are trying to seat the board with tension. Lastly, screw-in stabilizers are not supported for the backspace and the spacebar just due to the mounting style, so please be aware of that. But do these things matter? Maybe. The Baco Neko 65 is definitely not the board for everyone, but it is a unique board that has its own distinct sound profile, it feels great to type on, and overall it's just a lot of fun to play with. So if you're interested, take a look at the links in my description below. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. So what are your thoughts on this keyboard? Let me know.